This video is a basic introduction to networking concepts for the total beginner. The audience for this video is customers of Rescue's restaurant point of sale. We understand that learning about network technology can be a little intimidating, especially if you don't consider yourself to be technically inclined. But if you stick with me through the video, I'll make it as painless as possible and only cover what you really need to know. For reliable performance in the heat of battle, it's critically important that your network is properly set up and maintained. It cannot be an afterthought. Let's start off with some basic definitions, as this is the terminology that will be used throughout the video. Network. A network is a system that allows for the connection of computers and devices for the exchange of data. Local area network, or LAN. The local network is your on-site network connecting all of your Rescue POS tablets and printers together. Your restaurant's local area network is the backbone of your POS system. It connects all of your tablets and printers together. The LAN is managed by your router, and devices on the local network connect to the router using LAN cables or Wi-Fi. The Internet The Internet is your WAN or Wide Area Network, connecting you to computers that are not local remote computers like your credit card processor and the rescue servers. I hope the difference between LAN and WAN makes sense because one of the most common questions we get is why someone can't reach the internet even though they're connected to Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi connects your devices on your LAN or local network, but the internet comes from your internet service provider, your ISP. If your ISP is down, you're not going to be able to connect to the internet. Network hardware. LAN cables, also called ethernet cables. LAN cables are used to connect to network ports with a clear connector with a small plastic tab on the end. If the cable or connector is damaged, it will not work and the connection will be unreliable. Network ports. Network ports are where LAN cables plug in. There are ports on hardware, such as printers and switches, and you might have ports in the wall that lead back to a patch panel that has network ports. Keep in mind that network ports can also become damaged, and cables plugged into a damaged port will have an unreliable connection or may not connect at all. A network switch is a bank of network ports used to expand one port into many. Typically, there are lights on the ports indicating if there is a connection and the data is moving freely. If one port on a switch doesn't have lights, that may indicate a bad cable or a bad port. A patch panel is installed when a restaurant has wall ports throughout the building. Network cables are run through the walls in the building from the wall port to the patch panel. There should be numbers labeling the ports on the patch panel that match the wall ports. If there are no numbers on either the wall ports or the patch panel, it will be extremely difficult for you to figure out how your building is wired. The router is the main brain of your local network and is sometimes called your gateway. The router is named for its job of routing communication from one network device to another. It works exactly like the post office. Data packets are sent from one device to the router, and then the router delivers them to the other device. This is how your POS tablets send orders to the kitchen printers. Because routers want to be the boss, you can only have one router on your POS network, or they'll have a conflict and your network won't work. We'll go into more detail with this later in the video when we talk about setting up your POS network. Wi-Fi access points. Wi-Fi access points are a relatively newer part of the networking family. They replace LAN cables with a two-way radio. That's why signal quality is a concern. Wi-Fi access points must be placed in proximity to the devices they are connecting to with consideration for signal strength and interference. 
We'll discuss this more later in the video when we talk about network planning. ISP modems. ISP modems provide the internet access for your local network. You pay a subscription to your internet service provider and typically your provider will also install your internet modem. If your ISP modem is not connected to your POS router, you will not have internet access. The ISP modem may also have router capabilities, but it should not be used as the router for your rescue POS system. You may choose to use your ISP router's Wi-Fi for your guest network or non-POS related activity, such as office computers, but using it for your POS is not within specifications. Let's discuss the network requirements for Rescue POS. Because of the sensitive nature of POS transaction data, for PCI compliance, you must have a dedicated POS local area network that is not used by guests, staff, or any non-POS hardware, including, but not limited to, jukeboxes or music systems, security cameras and security systems, office or manager computers and printers, employee laptops or cell phones. Next, it's important to plan your network for reliable performance. Organizing your network area saves you from major stress and headaches caused by disorganization and ensures that you will not suffer from needless downtime, panicked employees, or unsatisfied guests due to network issues. Tip number one, keep your equipment from getting unplugged. Network components that require power include switches, routers, printers, and Wi-Fi access points. Every day, we get a technical support call from a panicked restaurant staff member wondering why something is not working, and it ends up being due to some component on the network being unplugged or plugged into an unreliable power source. Keep your cables organized and keep your guests happy. Tip number two, label everything. Label your power cables, your ethernet cables, and your network equipment. When an employee calls rescue support and we ask them to power cycle the router, they need to know which component is the POS router. You also need to know what power cable to unplug. Putting label stickers on all of your network equipment ensures that if your team needs help during service, rescue support can provide a rapid solution to your call. And honestly, customers who just follow these two tips really don't experience preventable network downtime. Next, let's discuss the placement of your Wi-Fi access points. Wi-Fi is a low power radio signal, kind of like a walkie talkie. Wi-Fi replaces the need for LAN cables between devices on your network. However, because of the nature of the technology, it is subject to signal loss due to distance, barriers, typically walls, and interference, which can be from nearby Wi-Fi networks, cell phones, and Bluetooth devices. For these reasons, we do not use Wi-Fi printers with Rescue POS and require you to use a LAN-based printer or Bluetooth printer. Every restaurant has a unique layout, but there are some rules you can follow about access point placement to ensure a good signal. One, centrally located. Access points should be centrally located in the area where the POS tablets are located. Line of sight is preferred, and if you can see an access point from where you're standing, you should be getting a good signal. Two, high placement. High placement helps to avoid barriers and increases the chance of line of sight connectivity. Three, good coverage. You may need additional access points to achieve optimal coverage. For example, if there are multiple floors or patio dining. So we've completed our coverage of networking basics. If you're ready to start planning your network and you have questions regarding the setup of equipment purchased from Rescue, just call our customer support team and we'll personally consult with you on the setup of your network. Now, depending on your experience with networks and the complexity of the network setup that's required for your location, it may be a bit much to tackle on your own. If you still need help for things like pulling wires, installing wall ports, or you're just not sure, 
The good news is that you should be able to find a local commercial network installer in your area. Just like plumbing or electricity, your network is a type of basic utility. And building a relationship with a local networking company is a very good idea. Now we'd like to walk you through how to connect your rescue router and access point. This is a diagram of the connections you'll be making. Most customers supply their own switch, as the number of ports required is variable based on the number of ports you need for wired devices such as printers. Switches used with Rescue POS should be unmanaged, so they don't need to be set up and don't interfere with your router. The team at Rescue pre-configures your router to work with Rescue POS, including the password and IP address. The rescue router is also referred to as the rescue gateway. Now keep in mind, you will need to supply your own network cables. The lengths of network cables that are needed depends on how your equipment is organized, which we cannot anticipate. In this example, we will be setting up on a countertop for simplicity. You want to have a dedicated area for your network equipment with all the cables organized. You would be mounting the access point high on a wall but for this demo, we're just showing you the connections. Take the rescue router out of the box and connect it to a secure power source. Identify your ISP modem and run a cable from one of the standard device ports on the back to the WAN port on the rescue gateway. The only ports used on the gateway are labeled WAN and LAN respectively. Take the switch out of the box and connect it to power. Connect an ethernet cable from one of the ports of the switch to the LAN port of the rescue gateway. Run a cable from any wired devices such as printers to the switch. Note, ideally, you will have wall ports available in the kitchen, and those wall ports will connect back to a patch panel in your network area. You would then run a cable from the corresponding port on the patch panel to the switch. Next, open the box for your Wi-Fi access point. The access point requires power, and this is supplied via a PoE injector. Alternatively, you can purchase a PoE-enabled switch and omit the injector. There are two ports on the PoE injector. Run a cable between the injector port labeled LAN and the switch. Run a cable from the PoE port of the injector to the access point. Plug the PoE injector into power. Well, your network is now connected, so power cycle everything. Turn off and turn back on the rescue gateway, the switch, the printers, and the Wi-Fi access point. Before we move on, let's cover some common mistakes and what not to do. One, do not connect the ISP modem or any additional routers to the rescue switch. This will cause a network conflict. Two, do not plug POS printers into anything other than the rescue switch. They won't get the right IP address and they won't be able to connect to the iPads. Three, do not use unstable power outlets. If any of this equipment gets unplugged, your network will go down. And with everything connected, let's make sure now to take a moment to label all of the devices and cables. Now let's connect our iPads to the Rescue POS Wi-Fi. On your iPad, go to Settings. Tap on Wi-Fi. Select the Rescue POS Wi-Fi network. Type in the password supplied to you by Rescue Support. You should now be connected. There are two more settings to adjust on this screen for best performance. Scroll down and tap on Ask to Join Networks and select off. Then tap auto join hotspot and change to never. 
Exit the settings and open the Rescue POS app. Tap the gear to enter settings. Scroll to the setting Preferred Wi-Fi Network. Tap the button Enable Permission and allow access. Set the preferred network to the current network, Rescue POS. Now, if an iPad is ever connected to the wrong Wi-Fi network, there will be a warning that pops up at the top of the screen alerting you. We hope this video has been enlightening. We covered networking basics, how to plan your network for success, where to get help with your network, how to connect Rescue POS network components, and how to connect your iPads to the Rescue POS network. Thank you for watching.